Okay, and we are back with Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. And this was a pretty, pretty tight uh, bid war with uh, Trevor just squeaking it out at the end. I'm going to pass it on over to Freeland and Chakrates on comms and take it away. All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this showcase of class. Uh, I said classic venue. I mean, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. As mentioned before, we're going to be doing a Trevor only run. I have the current world record with a 2852. So expect to see some high level speed running, or at least I hope so. Yeah, I'm super uh, excited to see this. My name is Chakrates. Uh, Freeland here is going to be uh, holding the reins for Trevor, and I'm going to be doing as much talking as I can so that he doesn't have to. And uh, yeah, you have all the glory. Ready, we'll go. At <laughs> when Freeland is ready, we'll go ahead and kick this off. So we'll be setting up. Setting up here real quick. Just want to double check to make sure. Just in case I accidentally world record. I have my splits up. So anyway, we're going to start right now. There's going to be an opening cinematic. And it'll count us down. All right, so three, two, one, go. All right, we are off in Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. Uh, Trevor did win out on the bid war, so we'll be, pulling, we'll be following Trevor all the way through. This game does make use of some really great side characters that you can switch between. Uh, but unfortunately, we will just be waving hello to one of them, not seeing the rest. But we get to show off some Belmont, uh, some Belmont uh, back here. So if you're familiar with the uh, retro classic titles, the NES titles in uh, CB1, 2, and 3, uh, CB1 kind of set the um, set the standard of like the side-scrolling action platformer. CB2 introduced some RPG elements. It's a, a little bit of a semi-open world environment, a little bit of deviation from the norm. CB3 here uh, really took it back to sort of the original form that you can kind of think of. But I, I like to think that it took some, some inspiration from CB2. Uh, CB2 made use of uh, some really good vertical spaces that I think CB3 had inspired from. Yeah, and also CB3 from isn't necessarily a linear game because there are different routes you can use to beat the game. And then That's true. the Bid War had three of them. There's actually five in the NES release. Five possible routes. Yeah, there's some additional paths you can take. Um, we're going to be seeing the most optimal one for Trevor here. Uh, getting us to hear some really nice music. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, a lot of this opening uh, opening screen here still is making use of like the, the horizontal linear space, but a lot of the later levels you'll get to see really makes use of uh, some vertical climbing sections. That's really cool. As you see here, Freeman picked up the holy water early on in the level. That's going to be our weapon of choice through most of this run. We're going to make sure we hold on to that uh, as best we can, and the game is going to do everything that it can to try to take it away from us. We have, a, we have a drop system, um, similar to CB1, where uh, enemies can drop random sub-weapons. Uh, it's based off of internal memory value that we'll see take up that Freeman's going to keep track of. As we take on our first boss here, and blink and you miss him, that is the first of the Richard bosses. Richard being a, a, uh, a term of endearment that we have assigned a lot of our skeletons in our, in our Castlevania games. Pretty yeah. nice triple campfire there, I might say, as well. I give it a 6 out of 10. Third fire's not lit up quite well. And that's level 1. So here you see the very first of our branching paths. You can take the upward path there and go to the clock tower stage where you can meet Grant. Uh, but we're going to skip that, unfortunately. Going to miss out on him. Some really nice music there as well. We're going to instead go to the Mad Forest. Uh, some music here that I really think is honestly underutilized in the uh, Castlevania space. Really a jam. Uh, if you pick, but as you, oh, go ahead. if you pick this stage coming out of stage one, there's a couple screens you can pl play in set block three zero that you would normally not see if you took the uh, clock tower route and came back down. 
if you're eagle-eyed when you on the previous screen when the Freeland was going up those stairs you used the holy water in a way that forced a heart drop from that ghost that's one of those drops I was talking about earlier uh, the game's gonna keep track of how many drops enemies make especially here in this power screen oh there's another one uh, once that number reaches five we're gonna see a sub weapon from an enemy instead of a heart so Freeland is gonna be paying close attention to our count making sure we avoid that completely. Again, we do not want to lose this holy water. It makes the ride uh, much more difficult. By the way, the count is four. Count is four. We count, we count up or down, I can't remember. I count up. Good shit, I think, counts down. All right. But we are in uh, we are in DEFCON situation. Yep, and that Fleeman coming up is a high probability of a drop. So we're going to try and jump over it. Is going to take extra precautions here, jumping over pretty much every enemy that he kills just to make sure he doesn't force a drop. Think it's not going to be a problem. We're going to yeah, skip the meat. Brave, bravery on display right here. Yeah, we're going to go JC. We're going to go JC here. <laughs> or at least the first half. We're hoping not to die. All right, another split here. We're going to stick to the top route. A little bit faster for Trevor. That is not a drop, guys. That that axe comes out of a candle. We're still a candle. we're still on DefCon One. I've had some very interesting situations where I actually saw two axes on that screen at one point. It was pretty funny. There we go. Uh, and there's our drop, expertly avoided. Count is reset back down to zero, so a little sigh of relief. Oh, I did not do that screen correctly, so I had to wait. Some scary, some scary jumps into enemies on these screens. We are doing the uh, Freeland is doing this entire section with uh, only two pips of health. Any hit from any enemy uh, would, make, would, uh, would kill Trevor, and we'd lose uh, quite a bit of time. But I have full faith in Freeland. Picking up some extra hearts, dealing with these spiders. There's another drop. And given the there is a drop system, we have to keep keep in the back of my mind. There are a lot of places where we can uh, we can force and manipulate drops to kind of make it safer. Uh, luckily, not having to utilize any of them here. But that will come into play later as we see our next big boss of this game, the Cyclops. We get a charge, we get a charge. Cyclops is feeling generous this evening. We might like pump this in the wrong direction. Yeah, I cut it too close. If you don't think, if you don't feel like you saw enough of that Cyclops, stay tuned. <laughs> they really like that boss, let me tell you. Yeah, next time you see him, he's gonna bring some friends in. So here we see our first uh, character that we could recruit, Sypha. You may know her from the Netflix show. Uh, we are unfortunately going to tell Sypha to go her own path as we go our own. This is Trevor only after all. This run is no longer canon. <laughs> no longer canon. <laughs> the Castlevania Lamar. The Belmont line is now doomed. <laughs> we go up to the ghost ship now. Uh, one of the longer levels in this speedrun, um, paired with some pretty uh, tense music. It's a, we had like some pretty like upbeat jams coming into this. Now we're kind of uh, we have this kind of slightly unsettling music to accompany our uh, our movement through here. Yeah, this track's used on two different stages, and it's the longest stage in all the categories that it's used in a lot of breaking blocks here that in the speed run not really a big a deal but in a casual setting uh can be very anxiety inducing as you're trying to uh, avoid these ghosts not sure if you have enough time to to get off the, to get off these uh these platforms before they break out from under you anxiety inducing you say isn't that the name of the track for this stage that is the name that is the name of the track yes <laughs> anxiety Really great soundtrack overall. Alright, so that last ghost boost right there, very tight boost to get, and it's nerve-wracking, and it's very satisfying to get when you get it in a marathon run. It is. It is uh it's very easy to get boost backwards from that ghost, which is not uh it's it's not a death by any means, but it definitely kind of throws you off a little bit. And if you're a little bit late, you can fall into pits. This is one of the first occasions you'll see of uh, these elevator platforms. Uh, the game will make use of those in, in a couple other situations after this. 
mainly just a waiting game, making sure you get the right cycle. Very easy to guess wrong and end up either in the upper kill box or the lower one. All right, so our drop Not count's getting a little high. We're at three entering this Medusa boss fight. Midway boss here. Another blink and you miss it kind of boss. There she is and there she was. Yeah, in this category for the first nine stages, bosses are more like speed bumps. Mm -hmm. You'll notice uh, if you're familiar with uh, Castlevania 4 that we saw earlier, ran by Kenshin Trek, uh, a lot of the enemies that you see here um, are a bit similar. Maybe not exactly sprite work, but in design at least uh, for a lot of the enemies in uh, Castlevania 4. These games are actually developed very closely uh, to each other, so there's a lot of shared concepts between them. Like these Dullahans you just saw here on that screen. Those are an enemy in, uh, I believe, later sections of CV4. You're going to see some flying gargoyles a bit later that were used as well. Medusa being an idboss was actually even a thing in CV4. So. A lot of shared ideas. All right, so we're entering 4E. There are birds, and there's the possibility of a drop, so hold on oh, tight. birds are so nerve-wracking. Okay, we got a good pattern. Oh, nice. Both birds. Two birds, one holy water, as I always say. <laughs> Last little dull hand as we go into this. Nice little boost. Very nicely done. Not a complicated boost, but easier to mess up than it looks. Yeah, I do a whip buffer on that one because you need, you need to wait at least the length of the whip animation. And we see our... Another blink and you miss it kind of pair of uh, mummies there. Dropped very easily to holy water. And it's our good friend the Cyclops again. Round two. He didn't hear no bell except, well, this time maybe. We got the clean Cyclops kill too. Fast one. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Which is only possible if you manage your health perfectly in the stage. Needed to, yeah, for the fastest Cyclops kill there, you have to take a little hit from him, which uh, Freeland did very well. Don't have a hit, can't do it the fastest way. Here we have uh, one of the best uses of vertical space, in my opinion. The uh, fifth level here, by the way. Ooh, gotta wait for that drop. Also missed the bullet boost at the start. But very nice fireball boost there. Very very uh, swag fireball boost. I love doing that one. It's my, one of my favorite boosts in the entire run. So between the drop and missing that front facing boost, I probably just lost about five seconds. And a drop wouldn't have necessarily been the bad thing. It would have made 5A though a little bit slower. Slower than that five seconds. Yeah, this is one of the first levels actually that you see in the Trevor run where you're, um, losing your sub weapon is not the worst thing. There is a replacement holy water that you can pick up in this next room. Very nice axe boost. That is very that is pretty diff difficult to manage. Uh, you have to kind of play around that axe axe knight's patterns, whether it gives you a low axe or a high axe. Uh, very difficult to judge on the fly and know how to react to. So very expertly done there from Freeland. Shout out to Kuchisita for the setup. All right, we, this is our first uh, auto scroller that you'll see in Castlevania 3. There's uh, four, actually four that I can think of in this route. Um, they are a set speed, but you can go optimally in these, as well as lose time pretty easily if you're not careful. Uh, what you see Freeland doing here is you're, he is throwing his holy water on these spear knights that are showing up to make sure that he gets a drop in this section to go ahead and reset his counter. One of the best ways that you can do that in this game. And there's the last one. This one, you have to throw if you want to go fast, so guaranteed count of one leaving this on the scroll. I'm actually a really big fan of the music for this level. It's uh it's not the it's not the uh it's not the biggest jam in the world, but it, I think it's one of the most uh, fitting tracks uh, per level in this game. Uh, I love kind of just jamming to it. Very nice axe boost here. Make use of the iframes, get through there as quickly as you can. I believe that's uh, I believe that's the fastest way to execute that. Yeah, as we, the, um, the low action is actually, I think, faster, or at least how I run it is faster. Fast, yeah. 
little tag on the foot there that we were not wanting. So we make a slight adjustment. Pausing for a little little marathon safety, no big deal. PB attempts yeah. usually would have uh, would have boosted through that fireball. All right, we got some birds here. We got to play a little careful here. Did not want to get up the stairs. Not a problem though. There's a little safety in that ledge there, so we're gonna go right and see Mr. Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, that bird's got quite the rap sheet. Ask JC. Oh yeah, that that bird is the killer of runs. Absolutely. Frank here, uh, <laughs> another another kind of blink if you miss it, boss. <clears throat> Fight very much resembling that of Coronauts in CV4. Okay, and we can rule they, out uh, world record now. <laughs> still, still can make a still can make a very good marathon time here. Level six here, uh, music track stream. One of my one of my actual favorites. I think probably my favorite in the game. You, you see the use of uh, m water mechanic that was actually pretty popular uh, with a lot of other most titles. Uh, in this direction, the water is pushing against Trevor, so you'll see uh, Freeland make use of jumping. That is actually a bit faster. A couple of boosts there. Not not what he wants to see. And right after this halfway point, the stream is now in his favor, so he's going to move on. He's going to move on. We'll see that coming. We'll see that show up again later. All right, I gotta be careful here. Count is three, which is one higher than I'd like. Count is three. He's still looking at good health for the rest of the level. Go ahead and kill oh, never mind. It's four. It was four. All right, drop out of the way. Don't have to worry about this bat dropping something on me. Very close fireball there. Guaranteed that was all calculated. Yeah, sometimes that that tower right there can be a little weird with its uh, with its firing firing speed there. I like to throw the holy water there as well. Very nice health routing. <clears throat> Very clean stage. I love 6C. Alright, let's deal with that bird nice and quick. First collapsing bridge of the uh, of the game. If, uh, if the rest of if the rest of what you've seen is not anxiety inducing enough, we have collapsing <laughs> collapsing bridges that you have to go across. Ooh, ooh, a weird murmur pattern there. No yeah, they succeeded in slowing me down by one whip strike. All right, next boss fight here. Very very cool design for a boss. All right, gain two cycle. We got one head. And we got two. Very nice two cycle. Another one of those fights that looks looks easier than it is. That is uh, pretty difficult to do in execution. So very good job, Freeman. All right, get your jam eats, your jam emotes out. We're about to hear a banger as we go and prep for Freeland to do some pretty impressive skipping. to prep the elevators. They're back with a brand new invention. Ooh, another tense one. All right. Everyone's going to set up for this elevator skip. Just missing it, but not a problem. Backup is not too bad. As long as I don't die. Yeah. Any, any, <laughs> any outcome other than dying is preferable. So that's that probably about really the uh, okay. 15 second time loss probably through all that. Yeah, arguably the uh, the most difficult the most diff difficult trick in the Trevor route. All right, here comes another tricky section. Yeah, this is a this, a very difficult room to go quickly. In. Which, I'm not sure what my drop count out. is. There it is. All right, drop's taken care of. Back to one. Those, uh, those little bone towers there are very difficult to get when you want to go when you want to go fast. So meet in that wall, but we don't need it. Stage seven ends up being this when I do pra when I practice before doing runs. Stage seven usually takes up the most amount of time. 
There's a lot of a lot of uh, type tricks here, especially this one. That jump is very scary. What is that? A five frame window? Yeah, it's a five pixel window to do the jump, but it seems it always seems shorter when you're doing it in the actual graphic. Right? Oh, it, it feels like it's frame perfect when you're doing it in the run. <laughs> that is a very scary jump. I believe a lot easier to do with Grant, but uh, with, with anyone else besides Grant and the card, um, that is a very tight jump to make. Yes, Trevor only. Castlevania Belmont Edition. So this is the uh, first of the downward auto scrollers that we can see. Uh, interesting to note about the uh, as you're going down, the kill box is above you, so you have to outrun that uh, as opposed to like the opposite direction for going up. So we see Freeland hanging out around the bottom. Stage 7 boss, we get to see the mummies again, and there they go. Alright, can we get a two and a half charge Cyclops at three? Cyclops is, still has a grudge over the last two fights, but he's going to give us an early charge. And a very nice fight. Very clean. Last time we will see the Cyclops, wave goodbye everybody. But it's not over. They brought friends. The Leviathan, or the, uh, the Angry Chicken, however you like to call him. Goat Chicken. <laughs> One of the beefiest en uh, enemies in this game. He takes so many hits to be dead. Yeah, but fortunately you can stack holy water on him, so it doesn't so holy it doesn't water. last on the screen very long. Holy water does wonders on that boss. If you had to fight him with just the whip, that that takes I don't even know, like probably five cycles, I think, maybe six. Incredibly tanky boss. Deja vu. We've been to Castlevania before. <clears throat> we are back in. The, we are in stage eight in the beginning of the Castlevania, as we uh, as we know it in CV one. With some, they've done some renovations. We have Axe Knights here. All right, let's see if I get this boost. Ooh. Very tight, especially the low axe. The low axe I found is very difficult. I don't even try Return with the low axe. Yeah, low axe is very difficult to execute on that boost. Some spiders have been helping out with the decorating. Dull hands are running out, running around with their heads cut off. Our good friend the Blob is back to make an appearance from CB2. I believe this is actually this is one of the shorter levels of the run, I believe. Yep. Not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of tech in this level. The most most uh, significant tech is probably here at the end after this screen. And, all right, we get through with a nice boost and we're zero hearts, which is perfect for this next section. Yep. We're gonna hit some candles in order to reduce some lag. It actually ends up saving two seconds if you do it. this bridge with a lot of hearts, but it's going to be very helpful. Another collapsing bridge. Yeah, if we if we left all of these candles unwhipped, it would be very difficult to react, especially with that Spear Knight there. Reacting to that Spear Knight and jumping over him with all of that lag, it's uh, very difficult to not get hit back. Alright, we have Death returning to face the Belmonts again. This time he has uh, he has an additional phase. I don't know what happened in CV1, but I guess he uh, used all of his efforts against Trevor. He hasn't recovered yet. And CV3 happens before CV1. Yeah, Holy Water, as you can see, is definitely the weapon to use in Trevor. Makes absolute mince meat out of bosses. I think our drop count is four, right? Three, right? Drop is the truth. I think the last one I saw was in the uh, Bone Towers in Stage 7. Wait, I'm supposed to whip that one. Demon Alley. Very nice adjustment there. Alright. Fleeman Alley. We love Fleeman Alleys. This one's not too bad, though. Yeah, Trevor only has the easiest Fleeman Alley on the screen. Mm -hmm. I guess. Only Allegrad has the 
That's a difficult one, if you think about it. Those two of the other characters just skip this. Yeah, stage nine, music track Riddle. Uh, another one of those just turbo jams that just keeps going. Uh, another good use of vertical space coming up here as we avoid those pressures. Right, this is a difficult I like screen. Call, I like to call this red light, green light. If you're playing with skids, you red light, green light. You gotta wait for these, uh, these bone towers to go. Avoiding that hit, very nice. Oh, nice, we got the stopwatch. Ooh, so awful. Hey, I'm not supposed to take that hit. Little hit through the axe knight there. Alright, All right, yeah, I got an idea. We're not taking any damage, we're, we're gonna grab meat into this auto upcoming screen section. Yeah, we'll grab meat here. Stopping time so that Spear Knight there doesn't have a chance to stand over the stairs as he is as he is wont to do, and impede us, usually causing a couple of seconds of, uh, of time loss there. Very nice use of the stopwatch, and still having plenty of hearts left over that we to play. So we lost our we lost our holy water there intentionally, even though it was a drop that worked out perfectly fine. So right here we're gonna get our holy water back. The rest of this auto scroller to help stack up our double and only a double. We will find out why later. These little fuzzies can be a little bit of a pain to work around. So ideally we're able to push our count to four at the end of the stage. But right now our drop count is three. Two hearts in the multiplier for your drops. Right, and we are out of the last upward facing auto scroll. Quick meat grab, we're back on track. Watch out for that bat. Sometimes it can go from the left, sometimes it can go from the right. It's always good to prep and expect it from the left there. Alright, very tense screen here. We're gonna let Freeland do his magic. Very carefully, what these birds are gonna do. Play good health. All right. Not out of the woods yet. Oh, that's the meat's already coming up huge for us. Oh, that meat is very clutch right now. <laughs> All right. The scariest part of nine four is over, but we still have doppelganger to deal with. These medusas are more visually threatened, threatening than they actually are. Nice prep throw. We're alternating whip and holy water each, every press. Dull, uh, doppelganger, sorry. Will uh, we'll never hurt you if you have enough, if you have at least a double <laughs> and can alternate between whip and holy water continuously like that. Very well done. That is stage nine of the books. We are on to the final level. Stage yeah. A. Very nice of that. Alright, now we see why we have that, that holy water only to double, but with enough hits to prep the triple. We're gonna have, we're gonna do a little manip there to get a triple axe very quickly. That's gonna save uh, roughly 20 seconds. Give or take. It could be done a little bit faster actually with this. I don't think it that. saves 20, because there is a backup that you can do. It's just it's more convenient to have the triple shot axe for Dracula. Yes, if he was unable to get if he was unable to get the axe, oh, sorry, if he was unable to get the triple up there, but still got the axe, he could hit, he would be able to um, use these candles in his Medusa to stack up a double um, in time for the drag fight. But if you if you miss the axe overall, you have to grab the axe later in this level and to um, do some stacking on the candles right before drag. Which takes a bit of time. I didn't like that fireball pattern, so I kind of took it safe on that screen. I'm gonna get meat here so that way I can show off a trick without. Very nice meat. Alright. Hmm. Sometimes this sometimes a spider can be 
really tricky. That's gonna play nice this time. Let's see if we get a good bat. Nope. Oh, right side bat. Left side bat, you can uh, use the timing to boost up onto that pendulum as it's swinging right now, so you can actually skip a cycle. Save about yep. seven seconds. Yep, that's the only thing missing in the world record right now. Get that, and this category is toast. On top of what's already there. You gotta pay attention which side these bats are gonna come from after swinging on these pendulums. They can knock you off if you're not careful. Alright, we're just a few hearts, heart candles away from facing off Drac. It wouldn't be Castlevania 3 without a three-phase Dracula fun. The order isn't quite the same. A little bit slow on Drac 1, but that's why we get the extra health. Mm -hmm. No big deal there on that. On that uh, still a good phase one. Killing in that position is the best way to do it. I get a good phase 2 at plus... Nope, so much for a good phase 2. That's alright. Very freaky looking phase 2 as we go into phase 3. Um, don't know what to make of this, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> it's a 2 cycle. Uh, That's what you have to make out of it. It is a 2 cycle. Kinda reminds me of the, uh, the Metroid uh, Chozo a little bit. <laughs> Meat absolutely paying dividends here. As we finish off uh, Dracula Phase 3, we still have to wait for these platforms to finish out. Time is going to be on Orb Grab. And that is time. All right. Well done, Freeland. Congratulations. Good, Very good sub-30 um, marathon run. Very, uh, very good one. That was a very awesome showing. And like you said, great for a marathon run as well. And now for the least satisfying ending in the entire series. Yeah, when you don't pick when you don't pick up any side characters, Trevor just kind of stands on the cliff looking at the castle. <laughs> there's a there's always like a little interaction between whatever character you pick up and a little subsection in the uh, in the scrolling paragraph, but not this time, not this time. Trevor must go, but for now he hopes someday to get he will get the respect. He, sorry, I can't read the the respect that he re deserves. GG's Freeland. Thank you, Game Ever Dancer, for showing us off. Thank you for uh, having me in Bums. Yeah, just Definitely. Feel... Thank you very much to both of you. And uh, that being said, we are going to get ready for our last run of the night with Colonel Fatso running Rayforce. Thanks again for that sweet, sweet Castlevania run, and thanks for those who uh, donated to see Freeland show off Trevor. Stay tuned, everyone, for one last run tonight and then more over the course of the weekend.